guys, and today we're talking about the Emax Nanohawk. The Nanohawk Emax's latest release of a tiny brushless 1S 19 grams indoor quad. And I'm about to tell you why I love this thing, why I love flying it in my house, but why you might not like it so much. Uh, and the reason for that is this thing is powerful and it is fast. It is a little difficult to control and I feel like I can do it because I've been flying things in my house for several years. In fact, the original Emacs Baby Hawk, the old school white plastic one, um, I used to fly that thing in my house and that's like a two inch, um, much bigger than this. Um, so I have kind of the experience to be able to do that, but I even found this to be definitely on the faster side. And I don't think that most people are going to have the stick time, the patience, um, to control something of this much speed in your house. Um, but that said, is it enough speed to go fly outside? Well, not really. It's still too small and not enough speed to go fly outside on a windy day. I just, it's just such a weird in-between thing. Now, Emacs does have a new version of their 1S board. It's kind of like a T, like the one that Kebab's working on. They have uh, a little video transmitter on board. They're direct soldering those 0802 19,000 kV motors. They have a nice four bladed plop. These are not ducks though. These are more of a guard. I've heard of people, they are bendy, right? So in a hard enough crash, you are going to impact the prop, which I've heard a lot of people breaking props. They do give you an extra set of these, um, which is nice. They have eliminated the super nice carbon fiber -y look Emacs case and just give you a cardboard box. I'm not really mad about that though, if they can reduce the price and pass the savings on to me. Um, my favorite indoor whoop of last year was the Ishin UZ uh, 65. This was a whoop that was just a tiny bit bigger. They're using a larger prop size. This is a 35 millimeter prop instead of a 31 millimeter prop. So it's larger than this. This has a ton of power, but also a ton of control. This one is just like a speed demon and I don't think a lot of people are gonna be able to control it. It does have the Runcamp Nano 3 camera, which is really great for um, something of this size. It works great. The um, reception was okay. You know, it's just a linear dipole on a little weak antenna for your VTX. It has like this little single strand of wire for your SPI receiver. Uh, I usually get on Emacs for using the SPI receiver, but for something that's meant to be flying indoors, it's totally fine, totally acceptable. You're not gonna get a lot of range of this, but it's not meant to have a lot of range anyway, so that's passable, giving you a pass on that one, Emacs. Um, one thing they did do was give you the same one cell 450 milliamp battery that they use like on the Tiny Hawk, um, but they've added a new connector on here. This is not a Whoopstall connector, it's some new proprietary, I think GNB came out with this thing. So it's not the BT 2.0 that Beta PB uses. It's not the traditional PH2 that all your other whoops use. It's a new one. So what does that mean? You're gonna have to get new batteries for this. So if you are a long time Emacs user like me and have a ton of these Emacs batteries, these are not gonna work unless you switch out the connector. Now they give you the same Emacs charger that you always get. It's a nice little USB pluggable six port charger, which is actually very nice. I like this charger, but this uses your standard whoop connectors on there. So you have to have this adapter. They give you two of these, so you could charge two of these if you did buy more batteries, but this has six ports. What am I gonna do? Buy more and more and more and more and more of these things? Um, I guess this probably does extract a little more power, but this thing is already what I would consider overpowered. I think they would probably be better um, using the old style connector. That might bring the power uh, a little more lower in order to make this more accessible to a wider audience. This is a really niche product. I think for the people that have the control, that have the stick time, that can fly something of this speed in your house. It's awesome. Also, if you have a large enough house, like I'm lucky enough at this point in my life, I have a little bit of space indoors, but in previous years, if I was living in an apartment, like something of this, like there's no way, it's just too fast, guys, it's too fast. You could put a throttle cut on there, but 
but then you know why there's other options the mobula 6 is so controllable um, this is just the the uz65 is basically like a, a souped up mobula 6 um, but this is on another level it's like a racing machine but since this is not technically a whoop these are arm prop guards not ducks would this even be allowed in a whoop race i don't know if it did and those guys are in a high level of skill those guys will be able to control this thing i could see this dominating at whoop races but is it even going to be allowed or is it just too fast too powerful if you want something that is even more powerful more fast than a mobula 6 and you have the skills to pay the bills and I can actually control it, or you wanna start training yourself to be able to take all of the money at the next Whoop Race Invitational, then this is for you. If you're not in that category, I say go get the UZ65 or the Mobula 6 and just have a little more control. Um, cool job on this Emacs. I like that they're trying new things. I like the canopy design. I like all the innovation, but I think you're getting a little bit too far off in the weeds here for most pilots but if you are one of the ones that this is for oh man you're gonna like it thanks guys